He has shown constant support to the Turkish state and their offensive towards Kurds. He translates Kurdish songs to Turkish regularly and his son has tattoos over his body claiming a Turkish identity. Most of the Kurds have tired of him, marking him as a traitor or Josh in Kurdish saying. But what really happened to Ibrahim Tatlises, the man who once literally claimed his Kurdish identity, who several times sang before the Kurdish flag, but who today seemed lost among the wolves of Turkey? Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to talk about this man, Ibrahim Tatlises, also known as Ibo, and the controversial situation around him. Before we start, don't forget to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so that you don't miss any further videos on this channel. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram in order to take part of unique Kurdistan pictures, facts and news about this channel. On Instagram, you also get the opportunity to vote on which video we're gonna release next week. Don't forget that this is an opinion based video and that this video partly is based on our own opinion. To check out our previous opinion videos, you can click the link on the top of the screen right now. If you want to check out our normal documentaries, you can just click on the channel and get right to the documentary videos. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Ibrahim Tatlises was born in the Kurdish city of Riha, which is located in Turkish occupied Kurdistan, also known as Baku. Being partly Kurdish and partly Arabic, Ibu is of mixed identity, and as he grew up, he lost his father in a young age, preventing him from attending school like the other kids around him, something that would lead to a fully grown Ibu who neither could read or write. During the 70s, Ibu often performed in front of weddings and restaurants simultaneously as he sold mixtapes privately, trying to support his widowed mother economically. During one of his performances, he was discovered by a producer leading to a path of a music career for Tatlises. The Kurdish language was at the time strictly forbidden. Just mentioning the word Kurd, Kurdish or claiming to be a Kurd was highly controversial, forbidden and could lead to torture or imprisonment. Ibu was thrown into the spotlight after a concert in Sweden where he sang several folk songs in Kurdish, leading to a court charge for separatist propaganda by the Turkish state. In court it is said that Ibu showed regret something that would be decisive in him being found not guilty to the charges. During these times, Ibu received his first bunch of criticism from Kurdish nationalists for translating other Kurdish artists' Kurdish songs into Turkish, which in time has been further on translated from Turkish to Bosnian, Albanian and other languages in the Balkan region. Here are some examples.
In 1988, Ibu was asked by the businessman Mehmet Ilmaz if he could sing some songs in Kurdish. Whereas Ibu answered, I am a Kurd, but the law forbids me from singing Kurdish. For this, he was once again indicted in September same year. Speculation of Ibu's private life has been many. The relationship between him and Hassan Bora, the man who worked as Ibu's manager during the 90s, is said to have been evolved into a relationship very much alike one of a mafia with personal vendettas involved. This was one of the leads in the investigations against the different shootings that Ibrahim Tatlises have been involved in. Media even wrote about how Tatlises himself was guilty of shooting both his ex-wife and former girlfriend in the leg, simply as an act of revenge. Because besides being a singer, Tatlises also managed within other branches such as construction, restaurant and even owning his own bus company and several hotels in Bakur and Bashur. And it is likely that all this management made Tatlises increasingly afraid of losing everything he had built up. Afraid of losing the wealth and the power that he had achieved. Within public, people start to talk about Ibo's very big obsession for money and wealth. In 1992, Ibo's son, Ido Tatlises, was born. I guess you all can imagine how much controversy his future tattoo on his chest would create among Kurds. The political climate during the beginning of the 90s were looking better and better for Kurds. The Turkish president at the time, Turgut Özal, showed great will to negotiate with Abdullah Öcalan and the PKK. However, unknown circumstances led to the murder of Turgut Özal and suspicion of a staged assassination to prevent peace between PKK and Turkey from other parts of the Turkish state came up. After the murder of Turgut Özal, the conflict between PKK and Turkey escalated. The Kurdish people were specifically targeted, even though Turkey claimed that they only targeted the PKK organization. In 1994, reports circulated in media of how several persons, including Ibu, were targeted by Turkish counter-guerrilla forces. Ibu was for a long time living dangerously. In time, he would offer himself to be an intermediary between Turkey and the PKK during the escalating times around 1998. The same year, Ibu's former manager Hassan Bura parted ways with Tatlises. Shortly after that, Hassan Bura's office in Istanbul was attacked by gunmen. Abdullah Uchmak, an aide to Hassan Bura, was injured in the attack and later on blamed the attack on Tatlises, vowing for revenge by saying that his blood also has to flow. Ibrahim Tatlises survived an assassination attempt towards his life later on same year, unharmed. In this article, one can read that Abdullah Uchmak was asked by a television interviewer in 1998 when the feud was going to end, whereas Abdullah replied, only God knows that. It will go on until the blood of Ibrahim Tatlises flows. In 14th of March 2011, Ibrahim Tatlises experienced his closest meeting with death as he was attacked and seriously wounded in the head, shot by a bullet from an AK-47. The assassination attempt happened as he was leaving the offices of the Turkish channel Beyaz TV following his weekly television show. As he and his spokeswoman entered a car, Tatlises was hit by a bullet that entered the back of his skull and exited through the front. A few days later, after being operated, Tatlises regained his consciousness. It was now that the at the moment Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan visited him in the hospital and it was here that the relationship between them started to grow. The question is, was PKK or any other Kurdish group blamed for the attack as Erdogan talked with Ibu this day? Two years later, Erdogan announced to the exiled musician Shivan Perver that he was welcomed back in Turkey. Being an exile since the 1970s, 
We want to save a lot of information about Shivam Parver in another video. So if you would like a video about him, make sure you like this video right now. Thomas Goltz, author and Turkey expert, further on describes Tatlis's personality by saying that intellectuals talked about Ibu as that he embodied machismo, violence, patriarchal culture of a tougher and older Turkey. Is it only me or does these characteristics remind me of a specific Turkish leader? Could it be the common characteristics between the two who led to that Erdogan invited Tatlises alongside Shivan Perver and the president of KRG, Masur Barzani, who he had started serious business negotiations with and whom shared a common disapproval of the PKK with Erdogan. The whole ceremony, which were held in the Kurdish city of Ahmed, was part of a tactical plan by Erdogan to win over votes from Kurds in Turkish-occupied Kurdistan. Of course, the three individuals right here all benefited from this ceremony. Barzani by increasing relations in negotiations, Shivan Perver by getting back home to Bakur, and Tatlises who received a lot of money from his new friend. We also have seen different occasions when Tatlises have visited Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan before his assassination attempt in 2011. One can sometimes hear that people praises Tatlises for his investments in the KRG region. But truth seems to be that Tatlis has never invested in anything for the sake of making the place better. Simply, every investment has led to a long-term benefit for Tatlises, which of course is obvious if you build a luxury hotel in Haulir. In 2017, Tatlises announced that he would participate as a voting icon for Erdogan's AKP party, something that irritated a lot of Kurds, but a big bomb didn't hit the ground yet. It would do that in 2018 when a video spread all around social media of how Tatlises sang a victorious song for the Turkish army during the invasion of Afrin. <laughs> In many Kurds' eyes, Ibu was dead, and he just confirmed it and confirmed it in his own social medias by posting picture after picture praising the Turkish military and its operations. We can now conclude four things. Tatlises has a lot of wealth, power and money which he is afraid of losing. Tatlises has built off a relationship with Erdogan after his visit in the hospital whereas nobody knows how the conversation then between went. Tatlises has many occasions where his behavior can be described as what is found in a mafia leader's life. Tatlises was seriously damaged in the 2011 assassination attempt. The doctors even mentions brain damage and paralysis as a consequence of the injuries. Now, what can we expect from a person like this? Does it really come to a surprise that someone like this does what he does? To me, it doesn't. To be honest, there is a lot of so-called Josh within the Kurdish people. The only difference here is that Tatlises is very very famous and that's the only reason that his behavior makes a lot of more impact than the ordinary Joshes from the villages. But of course, this is only an opinion based video and I really want to know your opinion. So let me know in the comment section below what you think and don't forget to like this video, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification button to stay updated on everything on this channel.